All right, guys, in this video, we're going to be creating a password toggle using Shad CN UI. So actually going to be extending the Shad CN UI input component. First of all, we're going to add some extra functionality to the input component. We're going to be able to add a suffix to the input component. So we can see here, we have two input fields. We've got a email input and a password input. The email input has the mail icon suffix and the password has this toggle, which we can actually add some additional functionality to, to actually click on and off toggling the password visibility. So we've got this eye icon here. So that's what we're going to focus on in this video. First of all, I've already got a Next.js project up and running on my local machine. I've already got a bunch of ShadCN UI components installed. So I've already got ShadCN UI installed. I've got the form component or everything to do with forms for ShadCN UI. I've got that installed. I've got the input component installed and also the button component. So I've got all of those installed already in my project. So if we head on over to the code, I've already got my example project up and running. This is what my app and the homepage for my app looks like. And I've already got a homepage up and running with a basic form. So within app and page.tsx, i.e. the homepage, I've already set up a very basic form. All of this you can grab from the Shad CN UI documentation, but I've just added an email and password to my very simple form. We can see here, we've got an email input and a password input. If we take a look at localhost 3000 then, this is what we're going to start off with. We've got two inputs here. Ideally, we want to extend then the input from Shad CN UI. We want to extend the input component. We want to add a suffix first, and then we'll add the toggle functionality for the password input. So first of all, if we head on back to our code, if we open up our components UI and input.tsx, we want to add an additional prop for our input props. We're going to allow an optional prop called suffix, and this will be of type react.reactNode. Now we need to destructure suffix then from the props for our input component. And I'm going to add a div. We're going to wrap this input tag in a div. We're going to display flex and we'll display the input and the suffix side by side. So let's do that then. Let's add a div here. I'm going to add some class names to this div. We're going to display flex and let's add a gap of two and also add an items center. So our input and our suffix are nicely central. So let's add our input within our div there. Then let's render our suffix. So if we save this now then and add a suffix to our email input, so within app and page.tsx, if we scroll up to our email input here, we can add a suffix and I'm going to add a suffix of the mail icon. And we need to import the mail icon at the top from Lucide React. So it's this mail icon here. Sorry, this one here, mail icon. So if we save this now and take a look in the browser, we can see we have our suffix all working correctly for our email input. Now then let's take it a step further and create a custom password input component. And this password input component will be able to toggle the visibility of the password. So if we head on back to our code within our components and UI, let's create a new file in here and we're going to call it password input.tsx. And it's gonna be so much easier if we just copy everything we've got for the Shad CN UI input component of course, we've extended it a little bit, but that's absolutely fine. If we copy everything from the ShadCN input component, paste it in for the password input, and let's rename a bunch of things here. So we want this to be password input props. We don't want a suffix, so let's remove that. We want to update this to password input props. We can remove the destructuring of suffix because that is no longer a part of our props. And we just want to remove all the markup that's been returned here. And instead, we want to add an input component. And actually we need to rename this first, our actual password input component. We need to rename it to password input. We want to set password input dot display name equal to password input. And we want to export password input like so. And then we need to import the input component from dot slash input. So we're importing this input component into our password input component. So let's close off the input component tag there. And we want to set a bunch of things on this. First of all, we want to pass down any class names. So let's add class name here, set this equal to class name, and let's just spread props as well. Additionally, we don't need this type because we're going to be adding our own type for the password input. So it's either going to be of type password or of type text, depending on the password visibility. We're gonna pass down props here and we're going to pass down ref as well. So then we just need to add a suffix to this input. We're going to add one of two icons. The first icon will be the open eye icon if the password is visible. If the password is hidden, it's going to be a closed eye icon. So let's add this suffix then to our input component. First of all, let's just add one icon. So let's add the eye icon, which we need to import from Lucide React again. 
at the top of our file here, we need to import iIcon from Lucide React. So let's save this and see what we've got. So let's head on back to the browser. Let's give it a refresh and it's not actually working. And that's because I didn't render the password input yet. So if we head on back to our code within our app and page.tsx in our example form, if we scroll down where I'm rendering the input here, let's remove this and instead render the password input, which we need to import right to the top of our file from at slash components slash UI slash password dash input. So then once we've rendered our password input, we need to pass the field down. We need to spread everything from the field down into the password input. Let's also add a placeholder of password. So if we save this now and take a look in the browser, let's see what we've got. Okay, so our password input is all rendering correctly. We have our eye icon, but now let's hook up the functionality to hide and show the password in the input. So by default, we actually want it to be hidden. So if we head on back to our code, within our components UI and password input, let's add a local state item here. So let's go const show password and set show password. And we'll set that equal to react.useState and the default will be false. So we want our password to be hidden by default. Then for our input, let's add a type. So if show password, then we want the input type to be of type text, else we'll have type password. Then we need some way to toggle this show password state item. To do that in our suffix here, we also want to tap into show password. So if show password is true, we want the eye icon to display, which indicates that the password is visible. Else we want to render the eye off icon. And again, we need to import this eye off icon from Lucide React. Then all we need to do is add an onclick handler to the eye icon and the eye off icon. So let's add onclick here. So onclick, we want to set show password. So if the password is visible, we want to set show password to false. So we want to hide it. And we want to do exactly the same for the eye off icon. So if the password is not visible or it's hidden, we want to show the password. So we want to set show password to true. So if we save this now and take a look in the browser, we can see by default, our password is hidden. Let's click on the eye icon and we can see this toggles the password on and off the password visibility. Now we could take it a step further here because if we double click here, we can see that some of the text is being selected, which is not ideal. This is not ideal functionality. So to do this, all we need to do is head on back to our code and for each icon, we can add a Tailwind CSS class name and we can use the select none. So this will make sure that anytime we click or double click these icons, that no text will be selected based on the click event for these icons. So if we save this now and take a look in the browser, if we give it a refresh, let's add some example password in here. Let's smash the high icon on and off to toggle the visibility and we can see no text is now being selected. So this is the really easy way we can extend Shadsy and UI components. And I think a lot of people as well don't realize that that's the whole point of ShadCN is we can extend these components. We can extend all of the code and modify any of the code in ShadCN UI as we see fit.